Rimpong. He believes online education would further a wedge between the top 20% and the working class. Let's take a listen to what he said. This lack of public education ends up being fundamentally anti-worker or this lack of content in economic rights. And I think I think racial justice ends up being fundamentally anti-worker and fundamentally anti-black. Right. Hmm. So um, the question is, can can this be mitigated through homeschooling? I just don't think so, because we can't expect every parent to, to understand these issues. That's why we have professionals. The idea that you could deprofessionalize teaching and privatize it, like I said, I think importantly demotes a lot of like working class people. Because, you know, the understand the people at the top 20 percent, they're going to have private tutors. They're going to have someone else go through their kid. They're going to have of boutique course. schools right. of stay at home parents or of uh, work at home parents. Like they'll figure this out. But for everybody else, they'll just end up like more prey to the power plays of the top 20 percent. I yeah, think he says it. Great point. I mean, I think that this school reopening debate and the people who are using it to further their own ideological ends, all of that is so important and so fascinating. There was an article that came out in the New York Times after we spoke to Irami about how, yeah, private schools have the money and the space to limit class sizes and to be able to reopen safely. Public schools do not. Mm -hmm. And no one is giving them the funds to be able to do so. So there was actually PTA President, I believe this was at Barack Obama's school in Hawaii, actually, side note, <laughs> yeah. fact check me there. But she said, um, if we were a country interested in saving schools the same way we've saved airlines and banks, then this is a problem we could solve. Wow. So well said. There you go. Yeah, no, it tells you everything you need to know about priorities.